All right, so now we have another video on graphing data. In this case, we're going to look at histograms. So histograms are used when you have really, really big data sets. Uh, and another advantage, they can be used for continuous or discrete data. So they look similar. So here's an example here on the right. So they look similar to a bar chart, but they're a little bit different. There's a few differences. So just make sure that you don't get them confused. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll look at this example here and it'll show it the best. So times for people to complete a marathon. So normally you have thousands of people competing in marathons, so you couldn't really have a massive list of all their finishing times and then sort that into a stem and leaf. It'd just take too long, the list would be too long, uh, it wouldn't make sense. So instead you put it into groups and then you kind of display it on a histogram. So for example, look in the, the top here, we have the time in minutes. So 120 to 140, 140, 160, and then the bottom, the amount of people who finished in that bracket. So this is the type of data you could easily plot on a histogram. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna just put label the uh, y-axis. So 20, 40, 60, and uh, 80, 100. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. And then you just label the x-axis as well. 120, 140, 160, 180 and 200 so then you just fill it in so the people who finished from 120 to 140 there was about 10 of them so i'll fill that in there just below um 20 uh 140 to 160 about 25 of them so i'll put that about there again there's no graph paper here so it's not super accurate just redo that perfect uh 80 people finished between 160 and 180 so That'll be a bit more. And then 100 people finished here. So there you go. And you can color in the, the histogram if you want. So just difference between the histogram and the bar chart is the histogram, um, there should be no gaps in between them. There should be um, 120, 140, 160, 180, 120. It's not separated like the bar chart, if you remember. Um, you have very separate lumps going up. Okay, or, or, bars going up so it's different in a histogram and in histograms as well in this one all the brackets or all the groups are the same distance to so the same width so it's always 20 across but there are cases where you can get um, brackets that are more than 20 across so for example the next one you could have uh, 200 to 240 say for example and that would be all the way out here and you have quite a wide bar so those aren't really on this course but just to show you that they can come up and um, I'll just get rid of some of this stuff yeah, those are the main things about histograms to know. Just how to draw them and uh, again, what they're used for. Because sometimes they'll just give you data and ask you to draw it. And it's important to, that you know uh, which correct graph to use. So before we go, we're also just going to look quickly at different distributions of histograms. So I'll, I'll tell you exactly what that means. So I'll just go down here and uh, I'll draw some pictures. So ignore that. So yeah, the last thing you need to know about Histograms, like I said, is kind of the distribution, the shapes they can take. So it's sometimes called distribution or sometimes called the skewness, or else just the shape. So the first, the easiest one is just the symmetric distribution. So again, these are all just histograms. And you can see it's symmetric because it's symmetric about a central line. So they don't have to be perfectly symmetric, but if they're generally symmetric, then you'd call them symmetric distribution. And the other types are negative and positive skew. So I'll go through those. So a negative skew like this, not many people get the low values or not many amounts are the low values and plenty are at the high values. So an example like this could be a really, really easy test where not many people do badly and loads of people do really, really well. Um, so that's called negative skew. So I always imagine because you have to walk uphill, so that's negative or else uh, left skewed. And if you're trying to remember left skewed, then just remember it's the shape of your left foot. So that's your baby toe uh, and then your big toe just gets bigger. So those are how to remember uh, the shape of this one. And then the shape of this one here is positive skew or right skewed. So this would be a really, really difficult test. So loads of people do quite low in the marking and then not very many people get the high grade. So obviously it's going up as it goes across. Um, and then that's called positive skew. So again, I think going downhill is a lot better than going uphill. Positive or then right skewed. Again, it's the shape of your right foot. So depending how they ask the question, you'll know how to remember the different distributions or shapes or skewness. Uh, of the different histograms. That's just gonna need to know that briefly. We're gonna talk a lot more about the symmetric distribution later on. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. So that's kinda it for histograms. You need to know the different distributions. You need to know how to draw them and you need to know what they're used for. So if you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, share them with friends. 
Uh, we'll see you in the next video where we're going to start looking at scatter plots.